I've got to see so many different places and meet the, the people, man. It's mm. the people that you meet along the way. That's really yeah. one of the most important things to me is the, the, yeah. the, the family that you build along the way. Welcome to the Military Bottom Line Podcast, where we learn from veterans and those currently serving how to make the most out of a military contract. We're here to motivate, inspire, and help you leverage your service to positively impact you professionally, personally, and financially during your military career and beyond. Welcome to episode 35 of the Military Bottom Line Podcast. Today on the show, I have Jacob Grawl. Jacob has been in the Army National Guard for over nine years now and has done kind of a lot of cool stuff, but also he he started off uh, kind of on the rough track. He talks about his experience in high school and how he showed up to school one day under the influence and how somebody said something very specific to him that changed the trajectory of his life. Now he's been very successful in the National Guard but also has been successful in running his own real estate business in addition to that. Uh, He talks about his experience, how the military has been good for him, and you know he's got now this incredible zeal and optimism for life that I think we can all benefit from. So I hope you guys enjoy it and get as much out of it as I did. What's going on, Jacob? Thanks for joining me. Hey, man. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Yeah, dude. Hey, I I heard you on, uh, on Barry's Wrestling with Real Estate podcast. And I'm like, dude, this guy is killing it. And I just, I love hearing from like other military dudes and girls and stuff that are like making it work for them. And so I'm stoked to hear your story. Man, it's just all about hustling, man. And and, <laughs> and there's opportunities and everything. You just got to seek out, you know, the opportunities. And if you have the drive, you can, you can, you can achieve it. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. So t- tell me a little bit about how you, like, what's your relationship with the military and, and what made you join in the first place? Okay, so just to kind of start it off, growing up, I was kind of a, I would just use the word hellion. I was in trouble all the time, <laughs> um, hanging out with the wrong people, trying to get attention from the wrong people. You know, really, really, really didn't have a path on where I was going. Uh, mm. And kind of sitting here now and thinking back about it, um, if you would have told me back then I would be here, I would I probably wouldn't believe it. I'd probably be in a jail cell somewhere or something like that. But mm. so I lived, I lived a life, a very reckless life. And, uh, about six weeks before my high school graduation, um, I got kicked out of the school that I've been going to since kindergarten, uh, six very weeks small before school. graduation, six weeks before graduation, man. <laughs> I, so th- this is as crazy and stupid as it sounds. Um, I got, I got hammered before school showed up, uh, parked my truck all crooked in the, in the parking lot, uh, stag- staggered into class. Uh, wow. the teacher, at, the teacher asked me what was wrong. And I was like, ah, the doctor put me on some ADHD medicine and it's messed me all up, but just lying, you know? Wow. And, um, so that they didn't buy that their mm. last dollar. So I'm sitting in the principal's office and, uh, me and him had a pretty good relationship seeing mm. that he had been dealing with me for the past seven years. Sure. And, uh, so he, he talked to me and, and I'll never forget this, that the, the school nurse was in there and she told me, she said, and I wasn't going to give up that I'd been drinking or anything like that. She looked me dead in my eyes and she said, Jacob, you should just be honest. Like you're not going to amount to anything. Like, it, it doesn't even matter at this point. Just why, why don't for once in your life, you just tell the truth and just go on and quit wasting everybody's time. Kind of like nonchalant like that. Wow. And, you know, even in a, in an altered mindset, you know, um, even young and reckless, that, that kind of resonated in my mind. And, and mm. I, and I took that with me. I still have it with me today. And, um, I, I took my expulsion and, and I went on and I got a certificate of, completion from the high school or whatever and but I didn't get to walk or graduate or anything like that but mm. I, I I was sitting there thinking to myself what am I going to do with my life you know is this the kind of life that I want to live is this the kind of person that I want to end up being you know is yeah. this my legacy where I where I'm watching my classmates that I've been with forever graduate and I'm sitting up in the stands you know not even supposed to be on you know the campus or whatever but yeah yeah uh I got in contact with a recruiter and, and I was kind of chubby kid. Uh, 
I played sports. Probably wasn't that good at it. Um, <laughs> more of like a motivator type guy or whatever. But, sure, sure. Uh, so I, I, I went and talked to the recruiter and, and uh, you know, of course, he, he, he gave me some advice. He asked me what I wanted to do in the military and we were sitting there going through some pictures or whatever. And I was like, military police, man, you know, that, that seems kind of cool. So I started thinking in my mind, okay, I'm just going to get into law enforcement and, mm. and I'm going to use this to help me as a tool. But so long story short, about two weeks after, you know, my class graduated, I shipped off to basic training nice. and uh, nine years later, uh, I haven't, I haven't looked back, man. To be honest That's with awesome. You. So, so what component did you join? Was it active duty army? Or no, I joined the Alabama National Guard. Alabama National, Army National Guard. Yeah, awesome. So, what I mean, it sounds like you you were like you were kind of just trying to get direction mostly. Were, were there were there specific things that you're hoping to attain or like achieve through you know a National Guard contract? You know, not at the time, but I, I knew that when I got to training or whatever, the whole everyone says, you know, you, you'll get discipline and all this kind of stuff mm-hmm. and the army values to, to be honest with you. I've never even, uh, other than when I joined, you know, the army values, having all those values out in front of me, that was kind of the first time I'd ever even looked at them in a wide scope, you know? So I, I didn't really have a foundation, uh, mm-hmm. especially on morals. You know, I just kind of, and I had great parents growing up and they did the best they could. And, and they're amazing parents. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but you know, if a kid don't listen to you, you don't listen to you, you know? So I <laughs> yeah, wasn't yeah. listening. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was an ongoing battle with them, you know? Uh, but I went to training and, and when I came out of there, um, I, I came out of there physically a, a lot better in a lot better shape, but, but also yeah. mentally, I, I, I shifted my mindset from this guy that had always figured out a way to, uh, I guess find the easy road and decimate my way around things and then make excuses, blaming other people Mm -hmm. to this guy that I want to achieve anything and I don't want anything to stop me. And when things come my way, I'll just do what I did in training and just keep my head down and keep pushing. And eventually Mm -hmm. I'll find the light. So that, that to me was one of my biggest takeaways from training was, was okay. You're, you're not this little kid anymore that runs around with smart mouth that you should blame everybody for everything. You yeah. know, you're, 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 you're now, you know, somebody that has learned and has dedicated themselves to something that's a lot bigger than yourself. And mm-hmm. you can, you can take what you've learned here and you can take it and carry it out, you know, for years to come. Absolutely. So. man. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that that is like, I mean, cause I, I was a similar kid. I, I didn't really care about much. And somehow, like, I don't know what it is specifically within the military that just teaches you to take responsibility. I mean, that, at the end of the day, that's like the core, I feel like of what, you know, they teach you is just take responsibility for everything in your life and your actions and, and move forward and just like put your head down and push, even if it sucks, yeah. you know? Um, and so it's not comfortable. Like the learning that learning that in life is not comfortable. Um, but you definitely come out on the other side better, better for it. But that's yeah. awesome, man. And another, and another thing it taught me too, especially I carried with me into the business world mm. when things happen, that's like out of your control. I don't get too excited about it, you know, yeah. uh, because I, I just realized that I need to focus on what I can focus on and change what yeah. I can change. And then the other variables, they'll take care of themselves. If I'm putting the right amount of effort in on my end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, you get used to pretty quick, not, not be able to control many things while you're, uh, you know, a young enlisted dude in the, in the military. <laughs> that's <laughs> so exactly right. Roll yeah. with the punches. But right on, man. So how has that, I mean, nine years in, tell us a little bit about your career and like how has that kind of transformed your career in the military, outside of the military? Like what, what has it done for you professionally, personally? Man, it's done so much. I can, you know, I got paid to go to college, you know, I went on to college, uh, got paid to go to college. I, I got to serve, um, in the Middle East, I've seen so many different places uh, with the military. Um, I've, I've served in a lot of different capacities from things like tornado to hurricanes to snow storms to yeah. the COVID relief to just uh, riot control, civil mm-hmm. disturbance stuff. I mean, so many different capacities um, that this profession has carried me and the experiences that I've gained from this 
is is really ones that there's no way I would gain them in any other profession, really. So I've got to see so many different places and meet the the people, man. It's mm. the people that you meet along the way. That's really yeah. one of the most important things to me is the the, yeah. the the family that you build along the way. Yeah, dude. Yeah, the the people. I mean, it's like I I feel like it's like almost it's said so many times that people like miss it, you know, like they're like, Oh yeah, yeah. The people like, Oh yeah, I've been told that. But like, I mean, nowhere else are you going to be thrown into an entirely different group that like ordinarily, if you just kind of went on your track through college, whatever, you're going to find all these like-minded people, the same people that you grew up with, and you're never going to be exposed to anything different, any different thinking. And like to be thrown into the military where there are people from all over the country and all different groups. It's like, yeah, the people, you know, second to none, you know, they, they, they're what make the experience for sure. Right. That's exactly correct. But I, I'll tell you one of the, it's kind of an interesting story after basic training and all that stuff. I was trying to figure out, you know, what I wanted to do is chasing law enforcement. Mm. And, uh, at the time I was 19. So, uh, I got a job, uh, as a correctional officer and the closest facility next to me just happened to be like number five in, in, in the Southeast is the worst one, you know, maximum security <laughs> prison. Or whatever. So I ended up working there for three years. Wow. Um, as, I, a, ni- I, as a 19 year old. Yeah. I started as 19 year old. Wow. Yeah. It was th- those stories, man, are, are crazy. I can write a book on all that kind of stuff, but <laughs> um, I, I gained a lot from that experience as well. You know, you, you start talking about um, the foundation of morals and stuff that the military mm-hmm. brings you. Well, also to be successful in a career, it takes other things too. not only just learning the job, but also communicating the job mm. too. So when you take a 19 year old kid and, and I'm not a six, four, 250, I'm not going to whoop on anybody up, beat them up, pound them down, anything like that. So yeah. I had to figure out a way, you know, working in a maximum security prison as a 19 year old, I had to figure out a way to communicate with these guys mm. and, and really um, be successful that way. So interpersonal communication skills, I, I started to develop that. And, and that really, at that point was when I was really developing myself as a person and a professional, you know, I knew I didn't want to do this forever, but I was going to take everything I can from it. And that's mm-hmm. also another takeaway from that experience too. You know, as bad as it was sucked and, and, and as terrible of uh, experiences that I had and the riots that I was involved in and all the craziness that I was involved in, I, I still could take good from it. And, mm-hmm. and that's the way when you're in your military career and, you know, you start, crap starts getting thrown your way. There's some good that you can take from it. I promise. Yeah. And, and even in the worst assignments that I've had, I, I looked at it with an open mind and, and a clear view. And, and I was trying to just pull the good from it. You know, mm. you know, I was throwing away the bad, the things that I couldn't control. Yeah. And I was just trying to pull away the experiences and the good. And, and, and it, if, with that mindset, it's done nothing but benefit me along the way. Awesome. I mean, I mean, that's, I, I feel like that takes a tremendous amount of strength to get to that point where you can, you're quickly filtering out the good and the bad. And like, I mean, like, how did you get to that point where you're able to, you know, effectively do that? Cause uh, I feel like a lot of people that kind of let the, the bad bring them down and, and they miss out on those good, those good things to retain. As crazy know? as this sounds, and it may just be me, but when you start setting goals and mm-hmm. you keep your mind focused on a goal, when things start coming your way that doesn't line up, but you, you're still focused on what you want to do, it's easier for me if I'm if I'm focused on A. When B and C starts coming this way, I, I don't really give it that much attention because I'm, yeah. I'm focused. I'm straight ahead. So goal set. When I started setting goals, when I started having things in in mind that I wanted to do, that's really when I was able to just take the stuff that that happens. That I have no control. And just put it to the side. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean. It, it it sounds, I mean, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong. It just sounds like the the amount of growth that you have had from you know in in these last nine years is it entirely because of the military or like have you had mentors within the military? Or like, I mean, from where you were in high school to where you're you are now and how you're doing now, it is just like a tremendous um, development, you know. And do you attribute it only to the military or, or what else do you attribute it to? No. And of course I'm strong in my faith Mm. and obviously that that's the number one thing, but also um, not just the military, but a lot of the experiences and things that I've learned in life was 
contributed because of the military, you know, yeah. and, um, uh, you know, the way, the way that I started investing into real estate and, and all that kind of stuff that, that was because I was deployed and started doing a lot of research and learning and things like that. I deployed and I saved every dime for my deployment. Wow. And when I got home, I started investing and now I built a real estate business off of that. So wow. would I, I, I probably wouldn't have a real estate business. You know, me and my wife probably wouldn't have a real estate business if it wasn't for the military. Uh, education, probably wouldn't have an education. Mm. When I started going to drills and I learned what a TSP was, I'm, I put 62% of my drill check. 62%. Every, because you can't do 100 because your allotment's will come out before that and yeah. it'll kick it back. So since uh, 2014, I put 62% of my drill checks into wow. the TSP. So I don't even see a drill check, but I know it's there and I know what it's doing. Yeah. And, um, but of course, when I go on active duty assignments, I dial that back, but mm -hmm. I'm talking about just when I go to month to month drill, sure. I, I'm, I may get $7 for a drill. Because mm. the rest of it's going into TSP and then the wow. allotments. Wow! So you're you're uh, you're very much a forward thinker at this point. You're you're looking into the future and figuring out how can I maximize my time and my money right now to to pay me off better later. That's right. So with with that suffering through the stink and and all that kind of stuff, there's got to be a goal, an end goal. And mm. like I said, I don't want to be doing it forever, but I want to look back at 38 years old and just be able to to just say, okay, you know, this is where I was at, you know, 20 years later, this is where I am now mm. and, and just be able to have something to show for it. And, and I hope by that point that, that I will. Yeah. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. So you mentioned that you and your wife have a real estate business. Like what is, what, what is your real estate business? So we buy rentals, okay. um, we, and we flipped houses, but mostly we buy homes. We fix them up really, really nice. And then we put a tenant in it and hold it for the long term. Nice. And and you learned about that on your own on deployment, just doing some research and trying to figure out how to yeah. make money? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and by that point, I'd already su succeeded a few different ways. You know, I, and, and I'm sure all your people know what an NCO is. I, I made NCO in just under two years nice. uh, in the military. Great. So I had that, that, like I said, that nurse that, that was just talking in my, that echoed in my mind. Mm. And I carried that with me. And, and really that was my drive and my fire was um, proven to myself and, and to everyone else that mm. there was, there was something a little bit bigger inside of me than everyone thought, you know? So, um, but yeah, I just, uh, I, I got a little off track here. So go ahead no, and throw right. me back in. No, that's right. Um, how do you, I mean, if you got, if you're like self-employed, you got your own business on the outside. A lot of people would think that like, having that part-time military service with, with potential, you know, deployments and obligations that, I mean, how, how on earth can you manage a, a business on your own, but still be called to go deploy kind of thing? Like, what does that balance look like? I wouldn't have it any other way, man. So <laughs> with, in, in my personal opinion, you, when you first start a business, you're working in your business, mm -hmm. you know, and then you want to get to a point where you're working on your business. Absolutely. So after we develop systems and put them in place where, where things kind of run, I wouldn't say on autopilot because obviously you want, you want to have a head on what things are going, things that are going on in your business, but you don't want to have to be there swinging a hammer every single day. Although mm -hmm. I enjoy doing that. And mm -hmm. when I'm home, I choose to do that because I, that is really what I enjoy doing. I, I love manual labor and working and all that, but I don't yeah. have to. Yeah. Um, so you put yourself in a position to where if you're called that the thing still runs without you there. Mm. And then when you, you know, you come back or, or whatever, you, you just pick right back up and, and, and carry it on. You know, you, you have employees that are right there with you. You have programs and softwares that help you self-manage, you know, do all your leases and all your rent collection and things like that. You have a really good tax guy. So you have things in your business system set up in place to where, if you're pulled away, you know, you can focus on what you're supposed to be focused on. And yeah. also my, me speaking, my wife, uh, she's, I mean, she's amazing and she's probably the, the head honcho and there's no way we could do it without her. So she, she's probably the head runner what I would <laughs> consider the head runner on this deal because 
um, she she really keeps things you know moving, and thank awesome. and I couldn't give her enough praise and thanks either. So that's awesome, smart man, dude. That yeah, good for you guys. That's awesome. How, what do you think that? How has the military for you create? Like, has it helped in this opportunity to do your real estate investing business and and running that, or do you just? I mean, why do you continue to do the military if you have this successful you know civilian employment? I just see I already had so much time invested. And then mm. also, I mean, I, I enjoy this. I enjoy the military. Yeah. Um, I enjoy the soldiers. I enjoy taking young soldiers and, and talking them and coaching them up and, and really giving them, especially when I see myself in one, and I'm trying to really instill values and morals and, and things that I've learned into them along the way. And that, that's invaluable. You know, mm. business and money and wealth and all that stuff can only carry you so far. Yeah. I mean, really. And it doesn't define your happiness at all and your joy. You you know, if you're passionate about something, that's really what will carry you along the way. And I'm very passionate about real estate yeah. and my business and all that. But I, I'm more passionate about helping others and helping people and serving. Mm. I, I enjoy serving um, on, on many different capacities, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I I think that that's something like that is so unique about in the military is is the opportunity to like mentor and and not only like serve as like military service, but like serve others that are, you know, your subordinates that you can help kind of shape and mentor and grow and help them learn from all the mistakes that we've made. Um, That civilian employment doesn't really give you that same opportunity, you know, Uh, and it's something definitely something that I, I have come to really appreciate through the years. It's like that mentorship and the ability to mentor. And going back to the employment thing, I would consider the military to complement mm-hmm. business owners pretty well. You know, I, I would even encourage people that are looking into starting a business to, to, to consider, you know, serving um, because the, the TRICARE um, yeah. has, has been really, really good for us along the way. Secondary yeah. and third retirements. I mean, if you stack your TSP and you're pulling, I didn't go into the blended deal. So I still got the the old retirement system. Yeah. Um, so, if you, you know, you got two or three spokes in the tire, man. That, mm-hmm. That's what it's about. And, and those things start compounding over time. And, and you'll figure it out as far as how to run your, you're talking about running your business without it, but, but also you gotta, you, you gotta be in a position where you're, you care about it, you're passionate about it or whatever. If you're, if you go to drill every month and you're miserable and all you can think about is being back home or whatever, yeah. it's probably maybe time for you to look at other things, but yeah, if you could show up and you can find the good in things and the passion and, and have the passion and drive and all that kind of stuff to, and then, you know, add value to others mm. and, and so that that's me would make it worth it. Mm, definitely, definitely. What do you feel like is one of the like highlight opportunities that you have found and taken advantage of within the National Guard that other people could kind of copycat and say like that is I got to pursue that. I mean, is there mm. is, is there a specific one or is it kind of just like all around like just the National Guard, the military? <laughs> I mean, I haven't done any like really like cool guy stuff jumping out of helicopters and yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Not, but, not even with that. I mean, I mean in, in personal development and your business or, or like your education kind of thing, uh, and, and, you know, the, the wide spectrum, not, not just cool guy stuff. <laughs> man, there's, it's just so collective. Like it mm. just all kind of fits together. It would be hard to just pick one thing out, but yeah. I mean, just, I mean, the, the hard work, uh, you know, the, the crap assignments and, and all that stuff. That, that's really what I've enjoyed the most is the time of suffering. I mean, as crazy mm, as that yeah. sounds, it, it is, as wild as that sounds, you know, I, I know you probably know what an NCC rotation is, NCC, uh, National Training Center for Irvine, California. It's okay. where you go out and you do what you stay in the box, what they call the box, and you stay a month out in the box and mm. no shower, no no anything like that. You're out there. And and to me, my peers, you know, they were finding the negative things, but to me, I would go back and do that ten times over again yeah. because I learned so much during the suffering, not about my you know, not just about myself, but my leadership, yeah. where I lacked, where I could build up, you know. And, and and to me, that's that's what I've enjoyed the most is is 
really experiences when I looked around and everybody else was hating it. Mm. As crazy as that mm. sounds. No, I mean, I mean, it makes sense. And I think that a lot of people, you know, the people that will complain about a situation later on, those are the people that will be remembering those times as like the best times of their life kind of thing. You know, there, there's something to be said for those, those crappy suffering days um, that, you know, they, they make great memories and, and they build us up. And as long if like for somebody that like you that can focus on the good while you actually, you're actually living in that, um, you know, it's going to better serve you that much more than just good memories. It's going to help you grow and build character, you know, man, I, I just can't, I couldn't say enough about, you know, what the military has done for me. And I know everybody's got their own stories and their mm-hmm. own experiences, but if you, if you're looking for a broken down kid that was able to turn his life around and build a foundation and, and build a business and, and build a beautiful family, um, that's what the military's helped me do along the way. Have I had to sacrifice? Absolutely, man. I, I've missed uh, anniversaries. I've missed uh, my grandmother passing away. I've mm-hmm. missed just like everybody has, you know, I missed my brother's high school graduation, um, my best friends, you know, graduations along the way, weddings, yeah. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. So, I've, I, it's taken sacrifice, but at the end of the day, I, you know, with goals in mind, it, to me, it's just it's worth it. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I, I mean, you you joined pretty young, um, and I mean, it, what did your parents think about it? Because I know a lot of parents that like, even if their kid was kind of struggling, like you as a younger, you know, teenager, they would still rather them not join the military. You know, like they just have this idea of the military being like the worst possible option. Um, I mean, how did not my man? So, (laughs) so what? I I don't remember how I, you know, pitched it to him or whatever. But Mm -hmm. I I do know that my parents was always very supportive in me, Um, even when I was just reckless. Man, they were Mm -hmm. still trying their best to support me. So when I told them that I. You know, I, I basically told them, I remember this, that where I'm at right now isn't where I want to go. This road that I'm traveling down, you know, I got to turn this thing around. So, yeah. and, and they've done nothing but support me and be extremely proud of me and mm-hmm. my achievements and all that along the way. So, they, I would just say from the get-go, they were they were very supportive of my decision. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Um, what I mean, you've done a couple deployments. Give us kind of a, a snapshot of, I mean, nine years is a long time to serve, but it's also worth noting that it's in a reserve capacity. And so give us an idea of like what your career in those nine years as a part-time thing has afforded you to do as far as deployments and, and different training things. Like give us a paint a picture for us. Man, I've got to do some, some really cool training. I, I've been all over, you know, really the United States going to different kinds of schools and trainings and things like that. Um, like I said earlier, I've been in some snowstorms, you know, I was able to, we were, we were going out and taking Humvees and LMTVs and we were rescuing, we were, we were literally hooking to uh, ambulances and things like that and dragging them up hills so they so could the, get going. The the road. Activated you guys for a snowstorm. Yeah. Wild. Oh, yeah. Wild. I think that was 20, 2014, maybe. 20, 2013, 2014, I think. I guess Alabama's um, not used to getting snow is probably why, right? N- not a lick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. And then, you know, tornadoes. We yeah. get tornadoes. The state would activate us. And uh, that's really humbling, too, when, when everybody has lost everything and you show up with, you know, a serving heart and you're and you're there with them and you're helping. And, and to me, that that's a that's a but that's a blessing too. Yeah. Um, going to the Middle East, uh, Kuwait, um, Jordan, place like that, and then right. seeing you know the baptism sites in the Jordan River mm. and, and seeing Kuwait City and all those things. To me, that's an experience in itself. But also the things that I was able to learn along the way about leadership and myself and and investing in business and all yeah. that stuff. That deployment afforded me all those opportunities. Mm. I carried with me, you know, when I left and came back home, I carried all those things with me, you know, not to mention I stacked money while I was there. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Key, key point. And now I will tell you this though, the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in the military that I, I was thinking about this earlier, mm. and this is kind of, this is me, uh, my, and my thinking, um, 
the, earlier this year, we were activated, or last year, earlier last year, we were activated for a COVID relief mission. We were going around and we were cleaning hospitals and we were cleaning nursing homes and veteran facilities and all that kind of stuff. Well, I live in a very, very small town where everybody knows everybody and mm. everything like that. So in our in our town, we have a nursing home. And we actually went out to that nursing home and, and I was overseeing the operation. So I wasn't actually involved in going inside and cleaning, but I, I, I made a visit and, and I showed up and, and I got to meet everyone. And, and to me, to, to serve in your community and take that where I've at the, up until that point, I've been all over the world, you know, uh, many different places in the United States, done, done many different things, but to be able to bring that to my town and serve actually in my community, mm. that was one of the biggest blessings to me. That was very humbling to me was to, was to say, okay, you know, th- this thing just stretches. It's just amazing how far serving can go yeah. um, because it, it can stretch all the way 2,600 miles or it can be in your back door. Yeah. And I think that's something that's really unique about the Na- the National Guard is that like, you know, big military, like Navy, Marine Corps, active duty army, they all focus, you know, like the hum- humanitarian stuff that they do is mostly like international somewhere, you know, they're, they're somewhere else in the world, which is great. But the national guard provides that really unique opportunity to like, you know, actually serve your local community and you get activated for, you know, crazy things like a snowstorm or a tornado. Whereas like, you know, the Marine Corps is not likely going to do that. They're going to be on a boat somewhere, you know, somewhere across the ocean doing something else. So there is definitely that really unique aspect of the national guard there that, that I, I would definitely agree with. And one thing I like about the Guard is I, I've came into uh, missions where we relieved active duty components. Hmm. And to me, there was so much room for And I'm not going to say we, we did it better or anything like that. But I'm going to say that coming from some w- for, with a group of people that have had many different jobs in the civilian world and can bring so many different things to the table, many different outlooks, um, it's such an asset to have that when you come into a mission set and uh, you know, the active duty guys, they may have not had the different types of experiences and learning and all that. And this is the way we do it because it's the way we've always done it type deal. Mm. And where, you know, you may, your, your commander may be the VP of a company and, and you got business owners with you. You got police officers with you that brings that. You've got teachers with you that brings that mindset with yeah. you. Um, you, you've got mechanics that, you know, have that mindset, the construction guys. So you just have so many different backgrounds that are joined together. That's mm-hmm. coming to do a mission and you've got the army way, but also you've got this insight of people that have so many different experiences. And to me that I've seen great success throughout my career with that, you know, being, being an asset that way, having that different experience coming to the table. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we as reservists, guard, whatever, we get we get made fun of as being like the weekend warriors kind of thing. But uh, you know, these people that come in, like like you said, they're they're outside professionals that they're they're you know figuring things out, making things happen for themselves, and then they they all come together and kind of make it happen for the guard one week in a month. And they're they're you know I don't want to say they're doing just as much as the active duty component because it's not really comparable. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're coming in and they're, they're effective. And so like, it is definitely a different way of doing things. Um, and so, you know, the whole weekend warriors, I think is, um, you know, kind of a joke, but it's, it's, you know, it's real. Like, you know, they're making it happen one week in a month, but, uh, yeah, man. So in, in all the places that you've, you've been, what's the favorite place, your favorite place that the army sent you? Um, Man, it's going to sound crazy. I, I loved NTC, man, Fort Fort Irwin, California, the sandbox. It, and and huh. it was favored for different reasons. So yeah. I could say Eglin Air Force Base because we got to chill out on the beach. Or I could say Germany, you know, mm-hmm. or I could say, you know, Jordan and see the baptism sites and all that stuff. But but the growth and, and, and the things I pulled away from the experiences, I, I just have to say, you know, NTC, and that's crazy. You probably never ever get that on your show. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm, yeah. I mean, you know, it, I think everybody has their unique answer, and like, yeah, everybody loves a great party destination or a great beach destination kind of thing. Um, but at the end of the day, I think after you've had some time to marinate on each experience, 
you know, you recognize where the growth happened. And oftentimes that is where, you know, you suffer the most. And so it's like, you know, it's not, it's not that uncommon. So I, I, can, I can appreciate that. But right on, man. What do you, how do you feel like you're going to use the military moving forward? Do you intend, I mean, nine years in, you're just going to push all the way to 20 and, and collect as much as you can kind of thing? Or what do you hope to achieve with it? Yeah, I'm definitely going to go. And I've had, I've been lucky enough. I've, I've got pretty good career progression so far. You know, I've ranked up pretty good and, and I've had really good opportunities along the way. Um, I, I've had good experience. I, I've, you know, been able to run missions that was way above my rank and I've been able to be involved in award ceremonies and got received awards like governor gave me an award a couple of years ago. And it oh. and, and just, you know, I, I've, I've, I've had really good success in the military and it's not about awards or anything like that. Don't mm-hmm. misunderstand me, but um, it, it, it is kind of fruits of your labor type yeah. deal. So I, I'm going to carry out to 20 years. Uh, that's my plan. You know, things can change, but that's my plan. I'm going to carry it out to 20 years. And then at that point, me and my wife will sit down and we'll evaluate, evaluate things. But, yeah. um, you know, with, with the retirement that we already have built, with keeping on with the, the TSP going, mm-hmm. um, having the GI bills to transfer to our kids, you know, um, for education purposes, and, and those things, will carry on way beyond, you know, mm. once I'm 38 years old, you know, that'll help me for years and years and years and years to come. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll do 11 more years and then I'll just kind of reevaluate, see where I'm at. You know, if I'm in a command position somewhere, you know, I, I you know, we'll, we'll just see, we'll just see where, where it takes me. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I like that you're, you're, like I said, again, like you're forward thinking, you're thinking about the future. Cause I think a lot of people, they kind of, they join with a mindset of like, yeah, this is what I'm going to do for the next four years, but they don't really think about how it can benefit them beyond that. You know, like, I feel like if strategically done just one contract in the military, you know, if you're forward thinking and think about how you can use it for your future, it can, it can be putting you, you know, decades ahead of your peers that, that didn't go that route. They did something else. So um, I like that you said that you're, you're far more focused on like the future rather than today. And like, yeah, this is the job I have to do today. I got to go, you know, on this deployment. That's what I'm doing. Um, you're always thinking about how can I leverage this to turn it into more in the future. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. And, and financially, to me, the military, you know, reserve speaking, that that if your goal is to like square yourself away financially, you know, eliminate debt, mm-hmm. things like that, an extra job that's one weekend a month, you're, yeah. you're not going to get paid that much in most part-time jobs for totally one true. weekend anyway. Yeah. And then also there's plenty of pro- programs out there to help you eliminate debt. And and not to mention pretty much you can go to college for free or, yeah. or make money going to college. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, man, that's what I'm saying. You, you hit it right on the head when you say that you can set yourself up for, for many, many, many years to come because of that sacrifice that you do for those four years or eight years, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. I, I think about it often. Like the, the part-time job that is the reserves or the guard, you, you nowhere else will you find such a good part-time job. Like one, one week in a month, every, you know, a part-time job is typically like 20 to 30 hours a week. And that's not really manageable with a full-time career or your own business, you know? Uh, but for somebody who's trying to, you know, do something on the side, it's uh it's yeah it's incredible opportunity you know and i I'd, it's manageable it's manageable, it, it's manageable. Yeah. i don't yeah i don't i don't care what anybody tries to tell me feed me everybody's got their own family situations and and sure. that needs to be taken into account but sure. it's manageable mm. yeah it ta- it takes sacrifice yeah but it's manageable yeah absolutely yeah i had a guy on a couple couple episodes ago that he's a reserve nurse and he's like yeah the military is my side I watched that episode yeah. yeah. Right. I watch it. And I'm like, dude, to be able to call the military, your side hustle. You no, know, I would never have dreamed of calling the military, my side hustle. You know, <laughs> it's uh, it's unique. It's unique for sure. And, uh, yeah. and, and there are many ways to kind of play it and, and make, let it kind of like work with your life and your, your circumstances. Um, but, but as it's an asset to me and as it's positive to me, I want to be an asset to it as well. And the people that's involved in it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, if you're an asset to, you know, the branch, your unit that it's kind of, it's a give and take, you know, like you're good to them. They're going to be good to you. And so it's all about building that reputation, um, helping others. And ultimately it'll, you know, come back to you. 
So that's awesome, man. Good for you. Good for you. Um, so I, I like to kind of give an idea of the spectrum that is the military. So people, because I at the beginning, I was guilty of kind of like highlighting all the good stuff, you know? And obviously, I want to focus on the, the positive opportunities that come along with it. But I, obviously, there are the downsides of the military. Um, and I like to kind of give people an idea of the spectrum of like, you know, a, a good day versus a bad day uh, in, in your nine years that you can share with us. Uh, let's see. I, I, so I guess it was 2015. I was getting ready to go on a deployment. We were doing a training event, uh, like a two week deal. Um, where they were training us up and getting us certified, you know, and things that we had to do to validate us to go on deployment, to mobilize. And I had just gotten promoted to uh, E5 uh, in the military, and I, I was 20. I was 20, so I was young. Wow. And uh, just, I think I just had turned 20, so I was really, really young. And probably in over my head at that point, especially, you know, getting ready to go on a deployment and have troops under me and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. Uh, my second day, um, we were told to move tents and I, I, we had weapons and I sat my weapon down. I went and moved stuff and, uh, -oh. uh <laughs> platoon, platoon daddy come out, you know, ramping and raving and hold my rifle. And here I am, you know, the new guy in the unit and the new young NCO. And, and, uh, that did, that didn't really look good. You know, my whole, <laughs> and my whole platoon literally got smoked because of me, the new, yeah sergeant coming in yeah um so that to me was a bad day but mm -hmm. i learned from it and i took a lot from it and uh i've never forgot that actually and uh something as simple as a weapon but it really goes beyond that because i tell that story often to, to my platoon um but in doing so this time it's a weapon but it could be something more important yeah, you know, and a weapon is very important. Don't get me wrong, but even in your personal world, you know, it could be something. So, responsibilities and, and things like that. So, I've learned I've learned a lot from. I've had bad days. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I've had bad days. Uh, I've had you know, poison oak come over my entire body and still have to do rope marches and yeah. and uh, you know, just getting injured during uh, trying uh, what is it, uh, like exercises or events or things like that, you sure, know, sure, but sure. you just come through them. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you, you, you have bad days, but that that's, if you're behind a rifle or you're behind a cubicle, you know, it's going to happen. <laughs> that's so true. And, so true. And it pays the same, whether you're marching or fighting. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Right on. What about, uh, what about <clears throat> a highlight, you know, like what's something that you, that you think about, I mean, other than your NTC, uh, time. That serving my community. Sort of yeah, community. what I was telling you about. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the to me. That's one of the the biggest highlights. And, and also, I've seen soldiers. And for a while, I was running a recruit sustainment program, and what that is is when the recruiters recruit a recruit, they come into this program before they go to basic training. It's the National Guard's, you know, way of getting you ready to go to basic training. Yeah. And I was running this program. And a lot of the soldiers that came into that program, I was the first face that they had seen because I taught them, you know, their first day of class. It was very intense, you know, a lot of screaming and, and just getting them wrapped up, getting them ready, you know, get them thinking, learning the basics, you know, rank structure and mm -hmm. and the history and all that kind of stuff. But to see, a lot, I did that for 18 months, so I've seen a lot of soldiers coming in and out of there. And I, and I watched them go to training. I watched them come back to training. Well, that's been three or four years from now. So, I've seen a lot of those soldiers really grow in their military career, professional career. I've seen them grow um, into NCOs. I've seen them transfer into officers. You know, I, I've seen them get out and go do their own thing, start businesses, write books. I mean, nice. uh, be art. I mean, music artists in Nashville. I mean, I've seen them wow. do all sorts of things. So, to me, that was a that, that's a highlight too. Is is like I said, giving back and being able to see. Um, those guys that, that you saw them come in and not know anything about the military, just like, you know, me, and then, you know, really transform themselves and, and create success for themselves. And that's a yeah. blessing too. I, I really enjoy seeing someone create success for themselves. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounds like sounds like you have no regrets about it. About what? About joining. That is sorry. Not not the first regret, man. Not the first. Like I said, it. I've sacrificed a lot, and it stunk yeah. at times, but I, I don't regret it. It's been worth it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where I would be if I wouldn't have done it. Is it something that you would encourage, you know, a younger brother to do or a cousin or something like that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Depending on the circumstances, you know, I, I, with all things to take into account, you know, and I, and my best friend went on to West Point, graduated from West Point and uh, he, he, he enjoyed that experience. So there's, there's many different facet assets that you do ROTC, of course. you know, you could go be a pilot, you know, you could just, there's so many different things that you could do it. Mm. It, but you but you have to have goals you know but yeah i, I definitely encourage people to and, and the military over a while and i'm sure you said this before has developed this thing where the parents and the grandparents they were all scared you know yeah, yeah. i don't want my baby to get hurt or anything like that but um there's jobs out there that that you, you can really that you can do that you can take with you outside of the military that really help you absolutely absolutely yeah awesome man well no i appreciate you sharing your story and it's like impressive because um, you know, especially to run your own business and to do it so successfully with your real estate and focusing on building those systems and stuff. Um, and, but still being able to serve your, your country and community. It's like, yeah, it's awesome. And that's, and that's what it's about. You know, like you are protecting and serving so that you and other people can have the opportunities to run their own business and pursue their dreams on the outside. And so you can do both, you know, and, and that's awesome. So if you had to ask me like where I'm going to go from here, what I'm going to go do in the future, yeah. I really wouldn't have a, I wouldn't really have a great answer for that other than I want to get myself in a position to where my main focus is giving back. Mm. So whether that's in, uh, and, and I won't get into politics or anything like that, what, whether that's in some sort of service with that or whether I'm, you know, on a board on many different types of associations or, or things like that. Um, I, I would be willing to do that. Um, would, would love to do that. Uh, I started my church. So to continue that and to grow that, um, and, and to really help that side of my spiritual side of things too. So yeah. positioning myself where I can focus less on how to make money or less on my business, ultimately, to get in the position where I can focus on how am I going to help others? You know, how, yeah. how can we do different things for other people? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's like, I think that most people that are trying to progress financially that, you know, that is the ultimate goal. It's like get there and then turn my focus. So it's like, you know, not split. And now it's a hundred percent back on, on giving back to those that I care about and the, you know, the community kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, and you'll get there too. Yeah. It'll come quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes it feels like not quick enough, but, uh, and it's, it's the game of patience, you know? Yeah. So that's awesome. It's not a sprint. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and any closing wisdom or advice that you'd like to like to share? Anybody thinking about joining or anything like that? Man, I got a story. Okay. I love it. So, yeah. Have you ever heard the story about the monk in the jungle? I don't think I have. Let's hear it. Okay. So, just a just a quick backstory. I, I'm really, really, really big on perseverance and mind shift. And one of the soldiers that I, ca I carried with me over to the Middle East, uh, he and I became really, really close. I mean, he was one of my soldiers. And then after we got back home, we were really, really good friends. He was in my wedding. We talked every day. And then he got in a bad place in life and committed suicide. Right. And it was, and we see this often in the military. We talk about you know, suicide and all that. Yeah. And, and I know you've probably, that may be something that's close to your heart too, but um, I always like to, to tell this story when I can. I told this story when I spoke at his funeral. So this monk's running through the jungle and um, he's getting chased by a tiger. And every, every time he would, you know, do a long sprint, he'd turn around and he'd still see the tiger. So he ran, he ran, 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 and he got to this cliff. And he looked back and he saw the tiger come and he looked forward, he saw the cliff. So, you know, it, look, it looked like a pretty desperate situation. But he yeah. looked out a little bit to the right and he saw a vine. So he took a few steps back and he jumped out and he grabbed the vine. So he, at this point, he's kind of holding on to the vine and he looks up and he sees the tiger, you know, looking at him. And he, and he looks up and there's nowhere that he can swing the vine to get to. Mm -hmm. The 
And he looks up and he notices that the vine's starting to break. So all around him, there's desperation. And it just an endless, like, it, it doesn't look like a way out, sunshine or anything. So a little bit to the right, he notices that out of nowhere, there's this strawberry vine and there's this one strawberry on it. And it's just one vine hanging. And he reaches and he plucks the strawberry and he eats it. And it's the sweetest, best strawberry that he'd ever had. And that's the end of the story. That's the end of it. <laughs> so what I take from that story is we've all been on the vine before. Yeah. We've all been in a situation where we're swinging and things around us just aren't going our way. Like it looks like an endless situation. Mm. But I promise you within every situation, there's a strawberry. There's one sweet thing. You got to, sometimes you have to look for it, Yeah. but you can find that strawberry hanging from that vine and it could be the best, sweetest strawberry that you've ever had. And that's really the only thing I can, the last words of wisdom or whatever is, is when Life kicks you in the cojones, try to find a strawberry. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. And I think, yeah, I, I can I can definitely speak to that right now. So, yeah, I mean, take find those opportunities even when uh, life got you down. So I love it, dude. I, I, I appreciate your, your optimism and your, uh, you know, your your attitude towards life. So it's it's uh, it's contagious. And I, and I appreciate you, you know, sharing that and putting it out there. So it's good. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. You, you never know when somebody can pull something from from one of these shows. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I was I was writing yesterday because I was kind of like looking at what this podcast has done over the year, and like I started at mid year, and it's like you know I I don't need a million downloads to help one person, and and nor does anybody else need a million whatever to help one person, um, and it, you know one person at a time. That's all that matters. That's right. <laughs> if you could take one kid and shift them or one person and shift their mindset or, or, or just be a part just play a small part in it and just be like the spark that gets them on the right track all your efforts to be worth it worth it amen brother cool man well i appreciate you sharing your story and uh i'm Absolutely. pumped for you I look, I look forward to seeing how things progress for you all right man appreciate it i hope you enjoyed that episode with jacob like i said you know a ton of zeal a ton of optimism and he's always forward thinking um really impressive story and it's always cool to see somebody able to turn their life around you know even though it was at a young age and he had plenty of time to do it um you know it was definitely clear that the military was used um in a great capacity for him to to make those changes and has really benefited benefited him and and turned his life around since then so i hope you guys enjoyed that show and i hope you guys just take away a little bit of his optimism his charisma and his forward thinking um But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next week.